Hello students, this is Mr. Hart. In the last video, we talked about algorithms quite extensively, and specifically your homework was to look at this particular problem, okay? Now, I want you to look at that solution you came up with, and let's just get an example of the solution you have should have for this particular problem, okay? If you did it right, you should have gotten this setup. Okay, the best connection is to connect these two houses this way, as we had mentioned before. Okay, then connect that house, connect that house over there, and then connect this house. Okay, so that's the shortest distance between all the houses where all of them are connected to at least one wire. Okay, but again, I don't really care as much about getting this particular problem right. We want to look at more at how to build an algorithm to solve this for us. Okay, so maybe you just played around with the numbers and you were lucky and found the shortest path. But hopefully you were thinking about the process that you were going through to solve this. Okay, so we want to look at, again, our algorithm. Okay, what was our input? What are our calculation steps? What is the output? Okay, so our input is a set of houses and the distances between them, right? Some kind of web of houses so we know how far the wiring would have to go. Our output is that we want to know the minimum amount of wiring that we'll need, the best way to connect them. So what are the calculation steps? Okay, When you're going through this problem, hopefully you said, well, the shortest wire is probably the best one to add to start. Okay, So what I did when I did this one is I just went ahead and added this one right here and added that one right there because the shortest possible wire is probably a good one to add to start your problem. Okay. The second step is to say, well, if we're going through the calculation steps, what's the next wire I should add? Um, that's as short as possible. Okay. Well, the next shortest wires are these twos. So since those houses were not already connected, I went ahead and added those twos right there. Well, what's the next possible shortest wire we could add? Well, that would be these threes, but that house is already connected and this house is already connected. So there's no reason to have those threes in there, right? They're already connected houses, okay? And then we say, well, what's the next shortest possible wire we could add? Well, we can add that four, but that house is already connected. So we can add this four because we are still missing this house and then you have your full solution. Okay, so if we're making an algorithm for this, the algorithm would be add the shortest wire, then if the house is not already connected, add the next shortest wire. If the house is not already connected, add the next shortest wire, etc. Okay, so in full formal definition, okay, our input again is the set of houses and the distance between them. The output is the route that lays the minimal route of wire. And here are the official steps, okay? So start with the smallest distance in the grid, connect two houses between this distance, okay? So connect the shortest wire, okay? Find the next smallest wire that is connected to the currently connected houses. If this wire connects to a new house, then connect this wire, meaning find the next shortest wire. If that house is not already connected, add it, okay? And we just repeat this step until all the houses are connected. Okay, and there you go. That's how you solve any setup like this. Okay, why would this be useful, by the way? Okay, what you just solved is called a minimum spanning tree. Okay, that's the official fancy name for it. Um, and it turns out this has applications all over the place, especially in um, construction and things like that, right? Electrical companies look at this all the time and plumbing companies and water companies, gas line companies, they all care about you know, what's the best way to connect these houses so that we, we use the minimum number of resources. Okay, so this is used all the time in construction. So it's also used all the time in the internet. Okay, when you actually look up websites, you don't actually just get a direct connection to that website. You actually bounce off between a few places that get you there the internet is doing all sorts of calculations, the servers that run it, to figure out the best way to send your package to where it needs to go so you can get to that website.
Okay, it uses a minimum spanning tree. So this algorithm it seems like it's solving a very particular problem, actually solves a whole bunch of other problems that are really useful. Okay, so that's one reason why we want to solve this problem using that particular algorithm. Okay, so again, if you can get a good algorithm, even if you don't formally define it like we're doing, but if you have a good set of process of how I want to do things to solve particular problems, then it saves you a lot of time in thinking about how to solve that particular problem, right? You just go, well, I know this algorithm will solve it well, so I'm gonna do these steps, and I should get the result that I want.